What's up guys, welcome to episode 53. This is the first episode of 2018. We're starting a new year and another 60 books. Um, <clears throat> just a little recap uh, of this week for me. Had a, a book launch for my new book. I'm looking over there, the camera's here. Um, for my new book, uh, There's an Owl on Our Car. And we launched that. That was pretty awesome because now it's on the tablet. It's in book form. And I've been reading it to my nephew every night. And he's loving it. Uh, he asked for it. And it's it's just really cool to have something. and um, To have created something and have uh, your nephew or love it and, and want to read it and be a part of it. And he's two years old now. So he's turning into this little person. It's... It's so cool to be around. Currently, I'm still uh, staying up in Ukiah with my uh, brother and his wife and his family before I make this trip to Missouri. Um, fire cleanup is starting to wind down. They're kind of just bouncing all over the place. They're not super organized. And as the work slows, um, I start getting a little more antsy. Uh, I already started scheduling, um, helping schedule for... Um, United Memorial out there, the church that I'm going to be playing worship for. So <clears throat> at this point, it's kind of like a hurry up and wait for me. Uh, I have uh, tomorrow, January 8th, is on my calendar. And it's been on my calendar for over three months. And the title on, <clears throat> on it is Burn the Ships. Um, Cortez, when... Um, when they were about to go into battle, he told he told them when they landed, um, I believe they were fighting the Mayans or, or something. They said they're going to burn the ships because they were either going to win, they were either going to succeed, or they are going to die trying. Um, and burn the ships has been on my calendar uh, for a good three months now. Um, and my buddy David Razo, he's the one who put it there. Uh, he said that was my burn date. That was the date that I needed to be out of California. And as I, as things kind of transpired and this fire gig came up, it kind of prolonged my stay here and, and moved some things back. But uh, as when it hit, um, when it does hit, I mean, I'm seeing it on my calendar already for tomorrow. Um, it's, man, I just want to get out of here. Um, so I set up, uh, I set up ads for. Um, my book, uh, and it got rejected. <laughs> so I don't know what I did wrong. Amazon didn't like the ad that I set up, uh, so I have to set up a new ad. I went through the process of that, and I'm waiting to see if that gets approved. I have that set, set for next week, Wednesday and Thursday, if it does get approved, so hopefully it will. I did some web page editing for uh, my buddy Bryden. Um, he does uh, insurance, so I got his insurance site basically up and running. Uh, made some tweaks to it. It's been up for a couple weeks, and he's just going to start sending that out and see um, what his traffic's like on that coming up. And that's kind of what I what's been going on with the fires slowing down. It kind of let me do some stuff as far as making calls out to Mo and uh, lining up a couple more interviews with uh, um, some companies, and uh, a couple are, are fairly promising. I mean, Operation Double Down, that's where I'm getting a full-time job and still continuing to do my art stuff and my book reading and all that. Um, a couple of them are promising. Some of them are like, eh. Uh, I did, uh, I mentioned it in a couple of my other videos. I went out there and did like four interviews with a beard just because they were they were companies I wasn't really stoked about. I thought it would be fun to just get my inter interview game back up. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty much locked into one at this point. I have uh, a final interview with the company, um, and as soon as it's official, um, I'll, I'll give you guys a heads up on what it is. Um, but I got my final interview with them, and uh, I'll, probably, I'll probably just jump on that one. Um, it'll be making decent money again, and, um, and I'll have extra money too from doing all my side projects, so it'll... It'll definitely be a double down from uh, from when I left the workforce, um, building these this kind of foundation of projects, and then jumping back into the workforce and having two incomes. Um, it's like I'm marrying myself. It's fantastic. Um, so I'll have two incomes coming in. It'll be kind of cool. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, this week's book. I read a very short book, just trying to do a little catch up. I'm still trying to um, up the production value of these videos. I'm working on buying a camera so I can get a couple angles going on for you guys. But I have Slingcast um, talking to my buddy Casey about um, our podcast and how we're going to pull that off with me in a different state now. Um, so a lot of stuff going on. Um, and I wanted to read a book quickly or listen to a book, go through a book. I did Lees of Grass by Walt Whitman. Um, this was a really interesting book. It's all poetry and um, some of it's in like old English style. Not old English, it's just poetry. You know, it's all abstract. And um, I pulled a couple things out of it. I think if I'm going to do another poetry book, I think I'm actually going to read it. When you're reading poetry or when you're listening to poetry and you're going through poetry, you shouldn't be multitasking and multitasking. <laughs> and I think that's kind of the lesson that I learned from this. Uh, I got a couple quotes that I pulled out of it, but because it's so abstract and it's not a storyline, it's much more difficult to piece together the different parts of the story. Um, and, and keep it congruent as you're like driving or as you're lifting or, or doing whatever. Um, when you're reading poetry, you really should just be still. Uh, for some of this book, I was still. For the majority of it, I was multitasking, so uh, I didn't get as much as I would have liked to. You know, this would probably be a great book to take with me on my backpacking trip uh, when we do that next summer. So these are the two quotes that I got. All faults can be forgiven to him who has perfect candor, openness. Oh, perfect candor. I missed a comma. Let me read it again. All faults can be forgiven for him who has perfect candor. Openness wins the outer and inner world. I really liked this quote because uh, this reminds me actually of another one, another one from uh, Samuel Clemens. If you never lie... Um, if you never lie, you never have to remember what happened. Um, if you always tell the truth, it's easy to remember. If you lie, then it's tough to remember because you got to remember what your lies were. Um, I find this to be, this actually is really um, in line with what I did this last week. Actually, I totally left it out. We shot, uh, we shot for the promo for the song Secrets. Um, Secrets was a really personal song for me to do um, because it's you really just, I mean, you're talking about us as human beings all having deep, dark secrets. I think when we're honest about them, people forgive. Um, when you're honest about your flaws, when you're honest about your shortcomings, people can forgive you for those things. Um, when you're not honest with yourself, when you're not honest with other people, it makes it very hard for people to forgive you because um, you haven't even taken the first step of admitting that there's an issue. So I really like this quote. I think it's applicable for, um, for music. Uh, one of uh, a, great, a great writer, actually. Um, Nick Lachey is a decent writer, 98 Degrees. I know it's lame. 98 Degrees, but uh, Nick Lachey actually has some really good stuff. Um, one of his best written albums <clears throat> was after him and Jessica Simpson got their divorce, and I remember watching a little documentary on it years ago, and he said something that's always stuck with me. He said, the more honest I am with the lyrics, the better the songs become. Um, and I've really tried to adapt that to my own music, and I think it rings, rings true um, I think this new one that I wrote, Secrets, is probably the most honest song that I've ever written. Um, it's one of the most difficult songs I've ever written, but uh, probably the best song um, that I've ever written. Super simple, but it, the, I think the honesty of it makes it good. Um, when you're talking about art, when you're, our experiences as human beings are not um, unique to ourselves. You know, I think we're all going through life... Um, with the same experiences. Um, and so when we're honest, I think that's when people actually relate uh, because that honesty comes out and they're like, oh wow, I'm going through the exact same thing I never would have known. And I think that's why people tend to forgive those who are extremely honest and have a great candor about them. <clears throat> now the second one is, I exist as I am. 
and that is enough. A lot of the book is him talking about just living, you know, um, outside of the city, outside of um, community, just living like an animal in the woods. He said, he, I, I, lay, I lay next to the streams and I drink of them and um, I lay in the meadow and the happiest I am is when, um, when a, a man is around my arm, you know, like a buddy and, and the, the girl is in my lap and um, he's just talking about human connection and just being um, and that being enough for us. I'm guilty of this, of, of trying to be, I think uh, the mini midlife crisis, you know, 32 years old comes around, you look around at your friends and everybody has families and everybody has houses and mortgages and they're doing their thing um, from a perspective of success of what people look around. I mean, it would look like I'm very unsuccessful. Um, I really don't see it that way. And it's difficult when other people do see it that way um, because the value of what I've accomplished in the last, man, three or four years. I mean, you got to take, I have to take uh, a, a view of it. If I've only been reading, like literally reading for 10 years. Now, I couldn't read till I was 23 years old. So um, I look at it now, I'm like, all right, I'm nine years in to being able to read. And in that nine years, I got an undergrad, I got my master's degree, I worked for a huge company, I coached uh, college wrestling for a couple years, you know, I've um, produced an album, I've written a couple children's books and got them published, and, and that's just in a 10-year time frame. And <clears throat> it's not paying off... Um, financially but that hasn't really even been my goal I haven't been chasing financial success I've been change, chasing art and, and art projects I think in this next couple years probably the next two or three years I will really be focusing in on um, financial success um, probably for the next three I'd say tell them about 35 because that's my that's my heart out for me 35, I want to be able to um, no longer need anything and just be able to do art for the rest of my life, which would be great. Um, music and, and books and other art projects and film and all the above. <clears throat> and I think um, in about three years, I can probably pull that off, especially with the knowledge that I just gained last year and the knowledge I'm going to gain in the next three years reading a gross amount of books. Um, I, my buddy David Razo told me a story a couple nights ago. He said there's this man who um, who dedicated his entire life to reading. Um, he just read and read and read and read and read and married and never had a job and found a woman to take care of him. It was, it was quite a, like a, a, a little bit of a funny story. You think about this guy who's like, no, I'm not going to work. I'm just going to stay at home and read. And his wife is going to work and making money. And finally she gets put up with it. She's like, she's done. And... Um, she says, you know, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to divorce you. We have no money. We have no, like, you need to put that book down. Get off your butt and go make us some money. And so, shuts the thing, shuts the book, and he says, what What do we need? Like, what is the What is the biggest thing we need right now? How are we financially? Like, well, what's going on? He had no clue. He's just reading all the time, being taken care of. And she said, we just need cash. We just need money. We need cash. So he, he goes to market and he talks to a couple different vendors, finds a vendor who's struggling, cuts a deal with him, says, if I can get your business running right, give me a little cut. He said, great. Showed him how to run his business, did everything for him, just from the information that he had from the books. Within six months, they were millionaires. The moral of the story is knowledge is, knowledge is power. You're, you're training all the way up to the point to where you use it. And then once you use it, it's easy. Um, <clears throat> I feel like this last couple of years has been a training period for me. We're about ready to jump in and, and use some of it. You know, not all in. But I think by 35, I think three more years of learning, three more years of really sucking in some information and, and getting into small business stuff and, and learning what works, learning what doesn't work. Um, playing some real estate games and, and all the above in the next couple of years, I 
think I got a formula. I've already actually started on it, but I think I got a formula to where I won't have to do anything but art. But when I when I turn 35, I will be quote unquote done, retired, um, and just doing projects that I love. Um, that's my plan. That's my goal. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but you gotta have big goals. Um, I exist as I am, and that's enough. I really want to get to the place to where I can do that, you know. Um, I can concentrate on some of the best art ideas I've had has been in the last three years because I've been freed up to do all these projects, you know. So <clears throat> that's pretty much all I have for Leaves of Grass. Like I said, a lot of it um, was poetry, so some of it was lost in translation as I was driving, as I was lifting, as I was doing other projects. Um, I'll definitely go over it again, but I think what I pulled out of it was valuable and applicable for um, what I was going through and what it, like the projects that I had last week. Coming up this next week, um, <clears throat> I'm working with the studio, uh, Red Pill Studio in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I fly out there at the end of the month um, for my first service at uh, United Memorial and uh, another recording session out there. I've already done a couple recording sessions out there, uh, my trips. But they are working next week to release secrets. So um, we're working on our final drum stuff, uh, working on the strings. I think the drums were happening uh, Monday night, uh, so tomorrow night, and the strings are happening, I want to say it's Tuesday? Thursday, something like that, um, and so if those two things can kind of get hammered out when I fly out uh, for my final vocal session and um, little touch-ups, uh, I plan to release that promo, probably release the promo end of January, probably release the song first week of February, we'll see, and then after that we have uh, by your side release um so i mean i'm gonna try to <clears throat> i'm gonna try to release maybe a song every month this year definitely four books this year we got podcasts uh i'm gonna be doing dispersing the cloud with guests who are gonna read books uh with me and then we're gonna talk about the books together and see how um see how they line up and uh, see how it affects their lives so the journey continues um and we'll keep pushing on i don't have an ending quote for you guys. Um, I feel like I've used it. I feel like I've used it in like every, every like every other video. I've said uh, failure is like salt. You need a little bit in your story to make the meal taste right. If you use too much, it ruins the meal. If you use too little, your story is bland. Uh, get a little failure in your stories. Get out there and um, take some risks. Take some chances. Uh, that's all I got for you guys. Talk to you soon.